Now, uh, how do we get out of this problem here? Uh, the the uh, solution over's paradox that we came up though showed that as the energy was lost from the stars, it was uh, converted back into mass uh, as between galaxies to the intervening uh, electrons. Uh, let's back up here for a second and go to the blackboard and talk about uh, the gravity theory. Now in these models of uh, the universe that we're coming up with here, we have this excess of very long radiation that's uh, uh, produced. In fact, Reavers even begin to measure it at the 100 meter wavelength and it's probably even brighter and brighter as we go to to longer and longer wavelengths, and it's very, very important to understand uh, how this radiation interacts with massive objects. Uh, if you had a large massive object here, and uh, uh, radiation was coming at it from all directions, they say this was between galaxies someplace, and there's a very long wavelength coming at it this way. Well, the, the interesting thing about very long wavelength is that it has very deep penetration depth. And so it goes into massive objects very large distances. And so this radiation would come through a massive object and would come out the other side. Uh, and uh, similarly there would be some coming from this direction and it would go this way. And it would come out the other side a little weaker than it came in. Because of the presence of this massive object, the radiation would be attenuated. And so as a result of this pressure coming in this direction, the object wants to travel this way, but then there's an equal amount coming this way, so it tends to cancel out and the object would just sit still. But if you produce it, put a, a, a second mass nearby, then the radiation that comes from the direction of the second mass is a little weaker than the radiation that came from this direction. And so as a result, this body is sort of pushed towards that body, and that body is also pushed towards this one. And if you presume that the amount of attenuation of the radiation is proportional to the mass of these bodies, you'll get a force between them that's proportional to the product of their masses. It's also clear that the closer you are to the objects, the greater the solid angle that each object subtends to the other. So that uh, this is, produces an inverse square law. So what happens if you had a force of very long wavelength uh, radiation that comes and, and pushes these bodies together, this force would be proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the distance squared between them. Well, that's just the law of, uh, of gravitational attraction. So there's no real reason for objects to come together and be produced unless they've been pushed together by long wavelength radiation from the outside. This is the brush theory of, of, uh, of gravity. And we are now showing in these models that this radiation, theoretically at least, exists. In fact, some of it's even being measured by, by Reber. So uh, uh, the idea that uh, gravity is due to this long push helps solve this problem over here that we have with the stability of the universe. <laughs> because what, what this stability problem was, it said that the radius of the universe is a function of, I said, the mass and radiation pressure. It's actually the gravitational potential produced by the mass and the radiation pressure. And so what happens is that as the, the, uh, 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 as the radiation converts to longer and longer wavelengths, it increases the gravitational potential and everything all balances out. So we don't have to have a, an expanding universe. You get to have everything become stable, and we've, we've solved the problem. In fact, what you get is that the, that the energy lost in the stars by radiation is exactly equal to the amount of new mass created plus the increase in gravitational potential, which causes the radiation uh, to be constant. Well, this is a very, very nice idea from the, from the standpoint of Mach's principle. Now, what's Mach's principle? Mach uh, was the uh, 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 had some arguments uh, about uh, the nature of inertial mass and, and inertial gravity. Probably a good representation of Mach's principle uh, to think about it is 
to uh, consider uh, the problem of sin count. And uh, uh, if you had, for example, a satellite uh, that was right above the equator of the Earth and was going around the Earth at the same rate that the Earth is spinning, then that satellite, of course, stays at the, at the same location over the Earth at all, uh, at all times. And if you were to apply Newton's laws to what's going on here, suppose you chose a coordinate system that had its axis at the center of the Earth and a uh, coordinate, center of coordinate system there and, and uh, uh, was rotating at the same rate at which the Earth is rotating. In that coordinate system, you have uh, Syncom sitting out here uh, above the same spot, and you have two masses, the mass of the Earth and the mass of the satellite, separated by a distance r. There ought to be a force between them. And so Syncom ought to come crashing into the Earth. Well, Newton says that's not fair because that coordinate system isn't an inertial coordinate system. But you ought to have, you've got to, you've got to operate an inertial coordinate system for those laws to apply. And Mach says, well, that's not reasonable. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that coordinate system. That's a perfectly good coordinate system. Uh, uh, what's wrong with that coordinate system? You, you define a, an inertial coordinate system as one in which your laws work, and your laws only work in in your coordinate systems. That's just circular reason. I've got a better definition of an inertial coordinate system. This is what we really have here, we don't really have just SINCOM and the Earth. We have the rest of the universe. And in, in that coordinate system that I chose, all the stars are rotating. They're rotating around the Earth. And Mach defined an inertial coordinate system as one that's fixed we're moving at a constant velocity with respect to the fixed stars, not to free space like, uh, like Newton defined it. And uh, this is so-called Mach's principle. And uh, people say that there's a certain amount of Mach's principle involved in uh, the uh, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. But nobody really knows exactly how much. But uh, we suddenly now have found the connecting link that shows why the rest of the universe has to uh, be there for SINCOM to exist. It's the, it's the physical link that, that holds, SINCOM up, holds SINCOM up that proves that the rest of the universe is rotating in this field uh, makes that coordinate system good. It, there is, in other words, a preferred coordinate system. And that coordinate system is one that's fixed with respect to this long wavelength radiation. And this suddenly gives a real reason to Mach's principle. It doesn't say by some magic way it's holding it up. It's holding it up because that's the coordinate system that has all the wavelengths in it. And, and uh, so I was like, well, OK. We've, we've talked a lot here. And I, I want to summarize where we are. We're, uh, uh, what we've said here is that the universe is not expanding, that the uh, redshift is due to the Compton effect, not the Doppler effect. And that gravity is a push due to long wavelength radiation. It pushes everything together, just like Brush said back in 1910. And uh, this solves Mach's principle. The real challenge uh, at this point is to see how do we tap this new energy source. Maybe from the very beginning of this, when I talked about uh, the farmers in Australia wondering what's the use of all this study. Maybe, just maybe, once we understand what causes gravity, we can do something.